Wow, what a gathering. And you have carved out a spot in the history of the game in Michigan that will supersede this moment. Your grandkids will be seeing the name James Pyatt. The Michigan Golf Hall of Fame undoubtedly will be seeing the name. Has all this sunk in yet? Uh, You're still in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, for me as a, a 23-year-old, I don't usually see past, you know, Fridays and stuff like that. So, <laughs> um, has it, you know, enjoying the ride and obviously grateful for everything. But uh, for me, it just, just feels like I'm doing what I love to do. And every day is just a new day. So that's how I picture it. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the ride a little bit. This ride has been crazy. Uh, you all realize that it wasn't all that long ago that we were watching the USAM at Oakmont, and we were watching a charge be made by this young Spartan because in the championship it wasn't, wasn't going well for you in the early part, right? So can you walk us through some of your memories of the U.S. Open at Oakmont leading up to and including the come from behind win? Yeah, uh, I mean that whole week it flew by. I mean it was crazy. Obviously having Coach Ellis in the bag was the coolest thing in the world for me, but um, I mean, it was just, uh, it's crazy still looking back at it and thinking, holy crap, this trophy's sitting next to me. But um, I just remember that, that final match, really. And, uh, you know, first 18 played pretty well. I was one up and feeling good going in the afternoon and sitting there eating lunch thinking, holy crap, I got a shot at winning the U.S. Amateur. And, uh, you know, I can't even win the Michigan Amateur. I'm, I'm going to win the U.S. Amateur. So for me, <laughs> For me personally, it was like, wow, let's do this. And uh, I just remember that, that day or that afternoon getting off to a poor start in the second 18 and being three down through nine in the second 18. So I was just kind of thinking in my head, you know, let's, let's do this. You know, from Michigan, you get that grit. You're up here. I feel like you get that, uh, that patch on your shoulder where you want to prove yourself. And um, for me, it was just don't quit, keep going. And uh, just kind of had some breaks go my way in the back nine. and. Uh, from there, it just feels like all blur. I mean, it's still one of those things I can't even, I, I can't believe it happened. So for me, it's, it's been crazy. You, you talk about that break in between rounds when you're having lunch and you're thinking about things. Would you have been more comfortable had you been able to just keep on playing and not stop for that hour or whatever it was? Uh, absolutely. Yeah, you're sitting there at lunch and uh, the only thing I remember actually about lunch is picking my phone up and one of my teammates drove from Ann Arbor and he's like, hey, I heard you're switching shirts this afternoon. I have a long sleeve shirt on. Could I wear your golf shirt you wore this morning in the afternoon? That was the, only, that was the only text I had. Yeah. So, yeah. So that was, um, yeah. So that was a nice, yeah, calming moment. I was sitting there. I showed Coach Ellis the text and he's like, what the heck is this? You know, like, in the middle of the U.S. Amateur and your teammates asking you for your shirt. So. Was everybody else steering clear of you? Like you don't tell a pitcher he's got a no hitter going? Kind yeah, of kind that... of one of those things. So. So yeah, everybody else wasn't really, you know, they just support me, amp me up, you know, being uh, rowdy in the crowd. But when it was lunchtime, everyone kind of calmed down, relaxed, or whatever, let me be me. And then I get a text saying, "Hey man, can I borrow your shirt this afternoon?" So, <laughs> I which, would, I would have to, I would venture to guess, not many people here have received a text like that. So what it, did you answer him? I just sat there laughing. I go, "What do I do?" And actually, I went and changed my shirt, and I just peeked my head out of the locker room if he was sitting there, didn't see him, but uh, <laughs> it's funny though, because on live TV, they get me after, he's still wearing his long sleeve shirt and it was like 80 degrees that day. So it's me, I give him like a handshake and I say, nice shirt, Parker. So that was kind of <laughs> on TV. So that's a good memory, but uh, yeah, it was an interesting moment there. I want to get to the aftermath of winning and the tour you've been on nonstop. But before that, you, you mentioned kind of jokingly, you know, I can't win the Michigan Am, but I'm going to win the U.S. Am. I want to talk about competition in the earlier part of your life and the GAM, uh, the wonderful tournaments that you have a chance to be a part of. What has your amateur career, including your involvement with the Golf Association of Michigan, what has that meant to you and how has it helped shape you? Uh, I mean, for me, it's meant everything. I mean, the Golf Association of Michigan, being from Michigan, it's, it's special to me. And... Um, it's one of those things, just every golf, GAM event I play in just because, you know, it's it's what I love to do. Uh, I love the game. I love the game, obviously, playing. So 
for me, these events are always the highlight of my summer, regardless, you know, I can play at Western Am, whatever, but I love coming back, especially, you know, Michigan Am week. I mean, those are my, my favorite weeks of the year. So for me, just uh, I'm extremely grateful to be from the state of Michigan and represent the state of Michigan. So for me, it's been, uh, it's crazy looking back at it now and thinking, you know, I've played in all these events and for me, I think I finished about second in every event possible that the GAM has, I've, I'm pretty sure too. So that's kind of what shaped me a little bit character-wise before, you know, winning some of them. But uh, no, for me, it's it's been awesome and I've loved every second of it. Okay, so you finish at Oakmont and then the whirlwind begins. Uh, you have that day, you've got press obligations, you're posing for all kinds of pictures. At some point in the immediate aftermath, I would have to think coming at you from every direction is a request, is an invitation, is an opportunity. How long did it take before it all kind of hits you and you thought, what have I gotten myself into? Oh, that was, man, that was kind of instant to be honest with you. I mean, as soon as I won it, they took me in a room like this, bunch of people, I had to give a speech and then they're like grabbing my hand, they're like, all right, you got to go in here now. I think I signed about 400 flags that night. I was there till about 11.30 and didn't even eat dinner that day because I was just signing stuff and people were like, oh, were you celebrating, you know, were you hammered, anything? That's, those are the questions I was getting, unfortunately. But uh, yeah, so the highlight of my, the only thing I got was I had two cores lights and I signed flags for three hours and then after that, the rest of my week was uh, just media interviews and uh, I just remember looking at it. I was like, oh my God, I need to get out on a golf course. That was like, my happy place, my like getaway. So at Washtenaw, my favorite thing in the world is they got an old green back there behind hole, what is it, 14, the par three. So I just go hang out there alone and kind of shut the phone off for a bit those past, those weeks after the end. But uh, it was crazy because people were driving out because they knew I was back there. They'd drive out and just to talk to me for, you know, 20 minutes, which, you know, you love it. But at the same time, it's like, wow, life changed like that for me. So it's been uh, an extreme blessing though. I think you and I did an interview where you were sitting in a golf cart. <laughs> yeah. um, you just you, you drove out somewhere and said, I can do it from here, but if I go inside, it's not gonna work. And so with that change to your world, how have you been able to hone in on your game and just get your practice? I mean, you've still got some college time left here. You're not done yet as a Spartan. So has it been difficult to separate the demands of being the guy carrying the trophy around from, I'm still a player, I'm still formulating my career. Yeah, absolutely. This has been uh, a big year of learning for me. That's what I tell people. I um, haven't been playing the way I wanted to. Uh, Coach Ellis's joke when I first saw him after missing about four cuts in a row in professional events is he goes, well, you actually get to play the full event this week. You know, you're, you're playing three rounds, not two. So um, that kind of that kind of summarizes the year in a nutshell. But um, no, for me, it's, it's been a big process of, you know, just learning because if this is what you want to do with your life, it's, it's more than just golf at the same time and uh, everything that goes into it. So for me, it's been, uh, it's been a hectic year, but uh, loved every second of it. And for me, it's just try to get better, focus on the game, and the end goal is to play professional golf for a living. So yeah. well, one, of the, one of the benefits that came with the USAM title, of course, was an invitation to play at a little course in Augusta, Georgia. Um, I've, I've thought many times uh, what it must have been like to take your first steps there as a competitor. I know you got some practice rounds in. I saw you Saturday as the uh, Augusta National Women's Am was wrapping up and I was interviewing the young lady from Michigan, Haley Borgia. I had just finished with her and I looked over at the clubhouse and out comes, out comes JP. Uh, I don't know if it was for the first time, but it looked like you were kind of making your way around. You were there a little early. And then I started looking through pairings and things like that. And I realized, I know the tradition. The tradition is the US Am champ plays with the defending champion. And then I believe the next highest ranked player. So he's with Hideki Matsuyama and Justin Thomas, Thursday, Friday. So that's heady company, <laughs> right? But let's add another little difficulty factor to it, if we don't mind, and let's put him in the group right behind Tiger. So he's got this vortex that's never sitting still. Everybody's following along. And I cannot imagine the change in mindset that that would require. So take us through some of your Augusta experience and maybe even in that context where you're like, can't we just be on the other side of the golf course? <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, the nice part about playing behind Tiger, I was talking to, I think it was Mackenzie Hughes before the week started up, and he was asking me about my tee time and everything. I said, well, I'm one behind Tiger Woods, you know, and you're talking like you're going to be nervous. He goes, oh, it's no big deal. I go, what do you mean? There's going to be a billion people there. He goes, no, it's better to play behind him. And I was wondering what he was talking about. When we get there first round, and, you know, Tiger's going to the tee, everyone's going nuts, and I'm playing with the defending champ. And uh, he watched Tiger putt out on hole one, and there's a billion people there. Half the crowd's gone by the time we get to the green because they, they only want to see Tiger. They don't even care. I'm playing with the defending champion and Justin Thomas, and everybody's rather get a view of you know, like Tiger Woods' ankle. That's about all you can see from the gallery there. So, yeah, that's, that is true. We went out and watched him on Saturday. You got to go about five holes ahead just to get a view of him. And, you know, for that day, too, I was like, why don't we just go watch someone who's shooting 65 like Scotty Scheffler? But, um, no, it was, uh, it was fantastic the whole week, just uh, the experience. I remember, for me, the coolest thing, actually, was watching him walk to the first tees. We, it was Hideki, JT, and me, and Tiger Woods on the potting green right by the tee. And I just remember him throwing his potter in his bag and walking to the tee, and the whole place is like, it sounded like a football stadium in there at that moment. I'm like, we're playing golf right now, too. I'm like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, well, the, the applause I got to the first tee compared to his wasn't uh, nearly the same. <laughs> a little, little, little biased, but it's okay. Yeah. Well, obviously the experience is something you'll bank for a lifetime, but you'll have those dreams of going back and competing again. And I remember um, after your first round, you weren't terribly pleased with much of life. It was a tough round. <laughs> and then on Friday, you come out, and the conditions uh, were brutal. Friday's conditions were really, really tough. It was chilly. It was super windy. And you went out and fought and clawed and scraped and had amongst the best rounds of the day of anybody in the tournament. So which memory do you hold on to more tightly? The irritation of Thursday or the grinding performance on Friday? Uh, it's 50-50, to be honest with you. Um, you know, it's tough to forget it. Uh, you know, you shoot an 81 at the Masters. It was, it was a big disappointment. I was, I was kind of going through it in my head, and I'd only shot... 81 time in the past I think it was eight years or something like that it was the first time coach Ellis watched me my friend you get used to it by the way if you're wondering how that feels yeah yeah I hope not that's for sure but uh yeah the first I shot 81 time in high school and it was at districts my freshman year and that was the last time I shot in the 80s that's pretty good so uh to do it at Augusta was a little embarrassing in my head but um no, I, at, at that moment, it was really, let's soak it in, you know, it's, it's the Masters, and, you know, while you want to hang your head a little bit, it's, it's part of, you know, the experience of a lifetime. So for me, it was um, just go out there expectation-free on Friday and just enjoy it, have some fun, you know, everyone who's been there to support me and that I love was out there watching. So it was, uh, it was really cool having my family out there, friends, and uh, just enjoying that experience. And, uh, yeah, unfortunately, didn't get the weekend, but... Um, still something I'll remember the rest of my life. Did you get in any sort of trouble staying in the crow's nest? Did you sneak down at night and have some somebody say, excuse me, sir, we'd like you to remain up in the nest? What was it like up there? <laughs> no, it was awesome. Um, I pretty much up there by myself the whole week too, so I became friends with all the locker room employees by the end of the week. I mean, one night I was having some beers with them and I'm pretty sure I got them in trouble because the media crew showed up and they all had a beer and it like scattered. Like, <laughs> it, was, it was pretty funny, but um, no, it, it, was, it was cool. And one of my favorite stories of the week is, uh, we, so we were getting ready for the amateur dinner and uh, the crow's nest is right above the champion's locker room. So we got it, me and, um, the Latin American champ are in there, and uh, two college kids who don't know how to tie a tie, I hate to say it. So we're sitting there, we're about to run late for the amateur dinner of the Masters, and uh, we're like, crap, what the heck do we do? And we're like peeking around, we're like, we need to find a worker, but they know how to tie a tie here. And I'm like, I peek my head in the champion's locker room, and there's an employee in there. He's like, hey, come on in. I'm like, all right, so cool, sounds good. And Sergio's sitting in there with his green jacket on and everything, and uh, we're just two college kids we're like hey nice to meet you mr garcia you know and just we're like awestruck and then all of a sudden he's like what's going on boys we're like oh we're looking for someone to tie a tie we don't know how to do it he's like i got you so sergio garcia i had him tying my tie like he's my dad pretty much so did, did somebody help you today with that time you know what i, I well my coach you know saying, there's a youtube channel that teaches these things. yeah um, I, I, 
I have no excuses, but uh, <laughs> no, my coach was asking, he goes, where's the master's tie, you know? And I go, oh, I untied it. I go, this tie was tied for prom in high school, so it's never become <laughs> untied since then. <laughs> okay, one more thought about the masters, and it connects to this table of guys over here, ladies and gentlemen over here. Um, I talked right after the masters to Brian and to Casey and to Dan, actually to kind of talk about their impressions and their thoughts and their, their pride. And they had some emotion in their voice. And they talked about on Thursday when you were announced, four please, now driving. They had tears in their eyes, standing back by the oak tree. What does this family, this golf family, mean to James Pyatt as you have continued throughout your amateur career and now are thinking about playing this game for a living? Yeah, um, I mean, they mean everything to me. Obviously, you know, my parents and my coaches, they, they make me who I am today. So uh, I'm extremely grateful for just everything they've done for me. And um, now looking back at it, I wouldn't be where I am today without them. So for me, it's, um, it's really cool to look over there and just see the people who made me who I am. And um, just extremely blessed and grateful to have the people I do in my life. So. Um, it's one thing I won't take for granted for the rest of my life is having the people who support me and uh, love them all to death. Okay, so college career is not done yet. This afternoon is, I don't know if it's a viewing party or how you find out, but you're, the Spartans are waiting for their assignment to, to, the, uh, to the regionals, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk some more amateur golf. Michigan State University, uh, second Big Ten, right? The finish was second in the Big Ten. So what are we looking at as we head into the, to the tournament? Um, we're expecting a national championship run. Um, for us, it's just uh, we got a really solid squad. I tell people I'm the two man this year, so um, we got good teammates pushing me, which is awesome. And uh, now just a deep squad of good players, we're all driven. So for me, it's it's a really cool thing. You know, your your last run as a fifth year senior to do with such a, a great program, great coaches, and uh, just uh, stay patient, enjoy the ride, and um, regionals won't be our last stop, so we'll be going to Arizona. Well, the guys on your team, who know you very, very well, who would text you and ask you to change shirts with them or whatever, <laughs> uh, they understand it's, it's family, right? But when you go to play other schools, especially if it's match play, nobody thinks that JP is going to be the two guy because he's got the trophy. Yeah. So did this trophy change how uh, opponents treat you? Um. Uh, not really, but yes, at the same time. So it's it's pretty funny. Like there'd be a lot of guys I'll play with, and then they'll either ask me like my summer schedule or something like that, and then I'll be like, yeah, I'm playing a couple tour events, and then they'll be like, how are you in those? And I'm like, well, I won the amateur, and then all of a sudden they're like, they want to like pick your brain about life or anything or be your best friend. So <laughs> that's that's more of the interactions I get. Um, so it's it's more of you know guys just think it's cool and you know just want to talk about it or whatever. But um, as far as how like players view me, I mean it's golf. Everybody wants to beat each other, so that's what I love about it, and um, it keeps you humble. Okay, so you look out at this audience, a lot of blue blazers out here. And by the way, might I add, being a Michigan man, a lot of amazing blue ties. But I won't. I won't That's all right. They're pretty I ugly, I know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sure. He's playing with house money now. He can say whatever he wants. Yeah, not a problem. You talked about playing in a couple of those tour events. Um, what did you learn from them? Um, it's just it's just a different game out there. Uh, just how they set up courses. Um, you know, how guys think, how they train. But at the end of the day, it's golf, too. You got to be you. You got to play your game. So for me, it was um, it was actually encouraging, despite how, I would say, how poorly my results have been. But um, for me, it's just going out there. I watch guys hit shots. I watch them putt, chip, and I say I could, I could do it just as well as them. It's just, for me, building that experience and getting comfortable being out there because I remember the first time, I mean, first tour I'm at Bay Hill, I got an opening tee shot on 10. You got to take it over people's heads and my hands. I can't even, I can barely get the ball on the tee. I'm thinking, these people better duck. So, um, I mean, it's, it's different right now. Everything's a first for me. You know, Masters, same thing. It looks like you're hitting down a shopping aisle off the first tee. So, 
things like that and just getting comfortable being out there and it's really just convincing myself I belong out there it's a big thing you gotta have that mentality that you're you're good enough to do it and that's really gonna be the big factor for me and those learning experiences for any of you who have played a golf course um, that hosts a, a big-time tournament if you've played it when it's not tournament season you understand it's wide open it looks great and then if you happen to play it when it's set up and there's grandstands and there's ropes and there's people everywhere it's a very different experience you you can i think only learn that through repetition right it's not something you can replicate in a practice round very easily yeah it's tough to do that and uh you can't replicate the drunk people yelling at you too on the pga tour and stuff have you that. had some of that fun oh yeah i mean i'm i'm thinking my favorite experience actually at bay hill was i was well outside the cut line the second round and uh 17 they they got all like the sponsor suites set up around it It kind of looks like a stadium almost but uh i just remember dunking one in the pond and i just hear a guy yell "Ooh, water ball from all the way by the green we're 250 yards away and i could hear it so i'm sitting there like at that point i'm just laughing like there's nothing it's stuff like that but uh as a spartan too you wear that logo and anywhere you go you get a go green and uh I told people, I'm like Phil Mickelson out there every hole, you're giving someone a thumbs up because you're just hearing Is that your go-to response? Are you thumbs up guy? It, it, I mean, to be honest with you, it depends on how I'm playing. That's, that's a proper answer. I want to be the thumbs up guy sometimes. You don't want to use another finger. <laughs> just stick with the thumb. As long as they don't say go blue. I heard that one a few times, but uh, yeah, I, I won't Vicious. use that. <laughs> well, I want you to know, in all seriousness, that during your big time in the spotlight, both at Holcomont and at Augusta, there were an awful lot of Maize and Blue fans rooting for this Spartan right here. Um, it is the pride of Michigan. This is the Golf Association of Michigan. We love the game. We love those who compete in it, whether we ever interview them or not. Some of you have taken part in tournaments, and, but whenever we have that opportunity to see somebody kind of representing, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, and we are, we're proud of you. I mean, I know you're tired of these things, <laughs> This is supposed to be a fireside chat because of the weather, but there's no fireplace. <laughs> um, but I know you've done your share of banquets. I know you've done your share of interviews. I, I know that you've had more texts from me. You ignored a bunch of texts from me, by the way. I'm going to talk to you about that later. Um, I know that this grind continues, but it's because this state sort of claims James Pyatt as our own. Even, even though mom and dad would have the rights to that. So would you please join me one last time in saying congratulations to the U.S. Amateur Champion, James Pyle. Thank you so much. Thank you, guys.